were given the charge to design a high school of the future. A very exciting project for us and everyone here at the office. And you know, one of the things that came up is what is a high school of the future? Does anyone really know? And so we kind of have an idea to create a place that's flexible for the future that will help educate students uh, to be great employees in the future world where everyone has to know technology and everyone has to know how to collaborate. And so what kind of an environment will encourage that kind of uh, skill and behavior? I've looked forward to this for at least 20 years. Uh, being a resident of Farmington myself, I knew uh, from our planning department that we, we would get a high school in Farmington. Uh, we have involved hundreds of people from the superintendency to teachers, curriculum, students, parents, the city. This process has uh, enabled us to, I believe, develop one of the best high schools in the country, if not the world, in terms of curriculum, delivery, uh, security, energy conservation. This school can change as time goes by. We've done a number of things to make that possible. And one of the things is that there are classrooms, there are a lot of different size classrooms, so that they can accommodate different learning platforms. Uh, the furniture in the school will all be totally flexible so that it can be rearranged at a moment's notice for any kind of activity that might take place. Uh, there are places to encourage and uh, allow students to do project-based and problem-based learning. Rooms like, you know, one of the things we've found as we go forward are the CTE programs, uh, they change over time. So what was once wood shop and cabinet shop uh, is now going to be composite lab. So how do we design that lab so that it can easily change for what the next new thing is in 15 years? We interviewed teachers and we talked to them about what could be better in their current high school. And one of the things they all without question said was that their classroom they currently were in was not big enough. And so we talked about how do we get them bigger classrooms but not spend more money? Because the budget for the project is the budget for the project and it couldn't grow. Um, in the typical block schedule in the Davis District, it's four periods a day in which one is typically a prep period for the teacher. So 25% of the day, you've got a 900 square feet or more, and it's just basically an office for a teacher to prep. And so we thought, how can we get a better utilization of the space, and then thereby we can create larger classroom spaces for the teachers to help them in their mission uh, to educate the students. And so the idea of teachers having their home base, uh, a small office uh, for their their use all the time, and then being assigned the classroom for the semester that fit the size of student load that they had in that class, that's, that's how that idea came about. We think it's gonna be one of the safest schools you know, ever built, uh, because we have the students, these classrooms we talked about of differing sizes are grouped into learning suites, and in order to access a learning suite, there are two doors they're typically on a magnetic hold open, meaning they're held open by an electromagnet. Each of those learning suites can be very quickly and easily evacuated uh, right to the outdoors. This building is a little bit unique. It won't be for every teacher in the district. It will be for those who are willing to be uh, teaching in a more open environment. Uh, and when I say open, it doesn't mean there aren't any walls. As part of the classroom, there's a collaborative area, and that collaborative area has good visibility from the classroom and from the teacher, so she can make sure that her students stay on task.